The GEO's common infrastructure is comprised of tools to access global data and help achieve societal benefits. The core elements include new functionalities that make it easier to find, share and use data effectively across multiple disciplines and communities. These methods include ways to find and access data, services and models through the web. In October 2010, the parties to the Convention on Biological Diversity and observers met in Nagoya, Japan for the 10th Conference of the Parties. Government's meeting at COP10 approved a new strategic plan for biodiversity, covering the next 10 years. COP10 also established HE targets to prevent biodiversity loss through 20 specific goals. These ambitious targets assume one actually knows what is already protected and what new areas need to be considered. How does one select the most sensitive areas? Are existing protected areas doing the job and are they well connected? This issue is particularly important for the African continent, which continues to face major societal and natural challenges. The issue is important to the European Union as well, given that the EU is the largest donor of aid to Africa. The Joint Research Centre of the European Commission is a unique research facility where scientists from across Europe work together to give independent technical and scientific advice for the development, implementation and monitoring of European Union policies. The Global Environmental Monitoring Unit has responsibility for assessing the likely impacts of climate change and man-made pressures on protected areas in Africa. Alan Bellwood, senior manager, has called a team meeting to respond to a request from European Commission colleagues in Brussels who are dealing with development programmes. The team discusses the current situation of protected areas in the Congo Basin. The basin holds up to one quarter of the world's tropical forests and is a mosaic of ecosystems. Rivers, forests, savanna, swamps and flooded forests. The question addressed here is the identification of ecosystems in the Congo basin that could be further protected and boundaries for new protected areas. So it's really a prioritization process. Yeah. How much time do we have? Three days. To respond to the challenge, the team proposes to identify unique ecosystems in need of protection using models such as e-habitat. The e-habitat model computes uniqueness of ecosystems using data on vegetation, temperature and precipitation. To find the model and the relevant data, the team can use the GEOS common infrastructure, which has been extensively improved in 2011. The starting point is the GEO web portal. Behind the portal are technical components such as the EuroGeos Broker, which make it possible to search and access catalogues of resources across multiple disciplines. The team looks for the global MODIS vegetation indices needed for the forecasting model. The GEO system discovers a set of matching results and the GEO web portal provides a link to the Reverb catalogue by NASA from which the team can download the MODIS dataset. In a similar way, the team finds data on temperature and precipitation. The team now looks for the e-habitat model in the GEOS infrastructure. The EuroGeos broker allows the team to choose the necessary variables, transform the dataset so that they are all in the same coordinate reference system, drag and drop them into the e-habitat model and run the model for the area of interest. This is a state-of-the-art dynamic analysis system. The whole process is done via web services without the need to download either the data or the model. Combining data of, uh, on land cover, data on species, richness and endemism, 
data on uh, habitat uniqueness based on ecological parameters to derive quickly a first idea of the priorities at the national level. Viteka Villemen explains the findings. This process allows us to spot those ecosystems that are most unique in the country and not yet protected. The next step will be to assess the uniqueness of these ecosystems at the regional level and the connectivity with other surrounding areas as well as assessing species richness. Results can be obtained in such a short time using only web-based services. A few years ago, the same exercise would have taken at least a week. Hour, and that's impressive. You pulled all this data from all the different sources together and you've got a result. That's, that's impressive. The results of the analyses are discussed further with local experts in the Congo. So look for locations in your country where new protected areas need to be established based on uniqueness. With the whole process done on the web, the results can be easily replicated and examined at any location. After validating the findings, the resulting advice is then passed on to colleagues from the European Commission in Brussels. One of the major challenges facing humanity in the 21st century is the ability to understand the complex relationships between environment and society and communicate these complexities effectively to the public and to decision makers. This is a global challenge, which requires a global endeavour and global data. The GEOS Common Infrastructure is a critical asset to meeting this challenge. <laughs>